No Bigfooters or Sasquatch were harmed during the filming of this video. Just their pride. Hey, my little Squatch monsters. Welcome to probably the best penultimate episode of Off the Richter I have ever done. Yeah, we are one episode away from the awards. So ironically, the last roasting is the best one. Now the first half of the show, it's comedy, it's roasting, but then the second half, it's very serious. It's like the Bigfoot version of 60 Minutes. We take an in-depth look into who David Paul Polites is. He's a Bigfoot personality, Bigfoot kook, an idiot that talks about people disappearing in portals on national television, to loved ones of people who are missing. If you've been following my series, you know that my brother died and he was missing for three months. He could have been very well a chapter in a missing 411 book. So I take this very seriously when someone like David Paul Polites profits over pain and suffering. He is a conflict entrepreneur. It's my best work. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, my little Squatch monsters. It's time to shake up the Bigfoot community. This is Off the Richter. It is not easy to constantly produce Bigfoot stuff. Because I'm going to film one today for you, I think. Maybe not physically like as we know it, but like where you could see it really good. Oh boy, here we go. Make sure your seats are raised and tray tables locked in the upright position. This is a show where I roast Bigfoot attention whores and hoaxers and Bigfoot superstars. Like me. Bigfoot is like cancer, in my opinion. Did she just say Bigfoot's like cancer? Oh, honey, bless her heart. No, 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 no. Bigfoot is not like cancer at all. He looked like a Neanderthal man with a lot of hair. About 800 pounds, massive. God, is everyone in Bigfooting a hoaxer? Yes. You want your Bigfoot video to be seen? Now's your chance. You know, believe what you want. Believe what you want, run with it. Find your evidence, get what you're doing. Just don't be a dick. Well, you haven't seen nothing yet. Oh. <laughs> Let's be honest here, guys. I refuse to believe in Bigfoot. So, Richter, I have no doubts about your sincerity in this matter whatsoever. But I gotta tell you, my friend, a lot of people watching this, seeing the uh, obviously disdain you have for the man, may think you have something, uh, a grudge to grind. No question. Yep. I don't lie. I don't hold things back. I'm probably the most honest person you've ever watched on YouTube. Straightforward, he is. The truth with Sasquatch lies with the Native Americans, and it's my job to point out the Bigfoot bullshit. <laughs> Next is the David Palisade segment. Uh-oh, do you think Richter might be one of the missing 411 after this segment airs? Wait and see. Now get ready for the final Polidal. If you've just started watching my Off the Richter series and are new to the enchanting world of Bigfoot, I want to tell you about someone who profits over human pain and suffering. His name is David Paulides. The one-time police officer from San Jose, California has now taken it upon himself to be your only source of news that he calls the New World Perspective. He's a liar, gaslighter, a master at subliminal manipulating, and is a total conflict entrepreneur. 
He exploits an already enraged conflict for his own financial gains and self-importance. He delights in twisting the truth to fit his pro-Russian extremist MAGA narrative and dangerously downplays what happened to our capital on January 6th. He does this while under the umbrella of being a Bigfoot author and a missing people investigator. After watching this segment, I will ask you this. Is David Paulides a racist? First of all, I hope everyone had a, a great New Year's and happy holidays. And let's hope 2021 is going to be a little better than 2020 was. David is a conspiracy theorist who, like the Bigfoot MAGA version of Forrest Gump, Scott Carpenter, got a hard on when his J6 Trump patriots ransacked our capital, terrorized our government leaders, and brutalized the Capitol Police. He wants to sway you over to his narrow-minded Tucker Carlson agenda. In my opinion, I allege David Polites is a proud white supremacist. You'll see why later in the show. A lot of people say, Dave, stop being political. Not political. I'm not going to talk about political parties. I'm going to talk about straight facts. David is even proud to be pro-Russian. You notice in this conversation, I even stated that Russia's out there trying to control ports or ground in other part of the world. I'm not 1% concerned about Russia. This beady-eyed, constipated American doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Russia doesn't really hurt anybody. It costs us money. Maybe David should pack up and just move to Russia. You know, where they freely beat up gay people and poison Putin's political adversaries. Oh yeah, Politis is rubbing one out right now, just thinking about it. And if you think Russia is a threat to us, do a little more research. It's amazing. Back in the 1950s, Republicans were so anti-communist, they were having fake trials. Now look at them. Russia is our friend. Here's a fun fact for David Polites. There's an estimated 50,000 black people that live in Russia. I bet I just sweetened the deal for him to move. Now let's imagine David as a history teacher. If you think back to the day, as little as 2,000 years ago, we were hunters and gatherers. We lived outside and we hunted for food and we gathered food and that's how we survived. And there weren't many people that were overweight then. Why do I feel personally attacked? DP explains the obvious. If you had the ability to merely send me an email, then you have the ability to write. No shit, Sherlock. But wait, there's more. And if you have the ability to write, there's a lot of things you can do with that. A lot. At the end of the day, Boomer doesn't want to be held accountable for what he says and does online. He thinks he's exempt. He is superior. Uh, I'm still looking for a video site without the uh, verbal restrictions. Uh, a site that, where you can monetize, a site where you can speak freely, a site where you own your videos and once you upload, somebody else doesn't. And that's the big drawback at this point. He doesn't want someone like me to make a response video to his content and criticize his lack of intelligence. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm not the brightest bulb on the cake. He can't even get that idiom right. He's just a tool. He has false integrity and suffers from misplaced arrogance. And in regards to character, just like every Bigfoot researcher, David Polites has none. A lot of people have tried to tear me apart because I wrote about Bigfoot. <laughs> At this point, David is responsible for giving his 340,000 viewers COVID disinformation. First of all, my prayers to everybody out there who might be suffering from the flu and this coronavirus. He has been jeopardizing them with his extremist Tucker Carlson rhetoric. How can he sleep at night? This was fully examined in episode 9 and Off the Richter this November. And I warned this Joe Rogan testicle 
about the cost of being negligent with his dangerous opinions, and YouTube took notice, and they struck him down. Yeah, I'm mad. I'm, I'm righteously disgusted. He did all that on his own and didn't listen to me. So now, as a consequence, people are now tearing him apart because he's a fraud and chooses to make his YouTube account political and anti-American, anti-compassion, anti-science. He's not balanced. And I think he's very dangerous. I am a target for people who want to tear me down and think, oh, you know, he must be stupid. He's talking about this. Oh, he's, he's insane. He's an idiot. I have to agree with him on this point. He is hurting people all for YouTube clicks and monetization. In the hundreds of thousands of impressionable minds, this, my little Squatch Monster, is a prime example of what white fragility looks like. A scared little old man. So who is he? Dog shit was once a failure of a police officer who now writes books about Bigfoot and missing people. So he doubled downs on being even more of a failure. His writing is highly scrutinized because of his one-sided inept investigating. He implies Bigfoot is responsible for missing people in our state parks along with magic Star Trek portals, but leads you, the reader, to make your own conclusions. I think that's cowardly, deceptive, and an example of not having any literary integrity. It means he has no balls. You can't have your cake and eat it too. He's a Bigfoot kook. Even though he claims not to be, he's a liar. And he's violent. Well, if you've committed a crime, you've done something bad. And when he was a cop, this little twerp was in serious hot water with his city newspaper. But we'll get to that later. I know I keep dangling that in front of you guys. He's not going to like what I discovered about him. Uh-oh. Facts. His missing 411 books are opinion pieces, biased and based on the absolute exploitation and profiteering over people's pain and suffering. It's malfeasance. Not only that, but he manipulates his MAGA audience with his gaslighting. And before we jump into our investigation into his documented misconduct as a police officer, let's lighten things up a little bit. It's the Bigfoot Talk Show with David Politis. Just the facts. Hey, Dave Philitis here for the k Missing Project, a copyrighted edition for our video page. Special edition tonight. Oh look, it's Bobo from Not Finding Bigfoot. Dude. My goodness, who knew double penetration would sit down with such a Trump-hating liberal like him? This must have taken place in Geneva. They had to get there because they took a portal. Special edition tonight, and we're with someone from the Bigfoot world. And I usually don't associate with many people from that world. <laughs> are you in denial? Or are you just a pathological liar, David? He says it more than once. I, the audience knows that I really don't, don't associate much with the Bigfoot world. <laughs> what a freaking liar. Play that clip again. I, the audience knows that I really don't don't associate much with the Bigfoot world. It doesn't matter how many times he says it. He's lying. Facts. Don't associate much with the Bigfoot world because it's an angry bunch of people. Yeah. Well, he's right. Bigfooters are angry people. Do you know why? It's because Bigfoot is nothing but a battle of personal beliefs because it's 100% belief based. Those are the facts. Bigfoot isn't real. But the drama is, and people like David Polites profit off of it by continuing the fabrication of it being real with lies, deceit, and subliminal manipulation, all for keeping the campfire going. Yeah, I saw your Nabs Jeep out there. Did you? Yeah, yeah. You should have stopped by. I heard you were a jerk. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yes, say it again, Bobo. 
I heard you were a jerk. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. God bless you, Bobo. I take back every uh, uh, joke I ever made about you. Bigfoot's real. Uh, I'm a knower. Is that true? Yeah. Is it true that I'm a jerk? Yeah. Even though Bobo is cut from the same cloth as Christopher Noel, he won't back down from anybody. So you know I've written three books about Bigfoot. Yeah. And I've written 10 books about missing people. First of all, this is supposed to be his interview with Bubbles from Not Finding Bigfoot. It's not about David Polites. No one gives a shit about DP. When he has a real Bigfoot TV celebrity in front of him. David, you're not that important. You know, and some people very close to you said some really bad things about me when I got started. Yeah. Was that Matt Moneymaker? Shut up! I sure hope so, because whatever they said about double penetration, I stand by it. Banging on trees. Yeah. Yelling. You, you, you do a good yell, by the way. I did. I, I'm pretty shocked now, but... This is painful. Is Renee back? Yeah. Is, is she still playing that role where, yeah, I don't really believe it? She thinks it's a spirit animal. A spirit animal? Yeah. Meaning what? That it, it's a paranormal entity. Okay. I gotta say, that position that Bigfoot is possibly a spirit animal does coincide with many Native American beliefs. And this is more acceptable than Bigfoot killing thousands of missing people across this continent. And Cliff kind of believes it's an ape gorilla, right? No, he thinks, yeah, he thinks it's a hominid. Hominid? He thinks, he thinks it's probably, uh, most likely Australopithecus. Okay. Like a, large, like a scaled up version. What do you think? Finally, David asks a decent and direct question. A question that's making all the THC inside Bobo's brain simmer to a conclusion. Now, what do you do when somebody comes up to you and says, hey, you know, you, you acted real good in that, but uh, there's no real evidence. Why should I even believe that? that that's there's no, that shows they know nothing about the subject. They say there's no real evidence. There's plenty of evidence. This is where Bubbles is wrong, and like most Bigfoot fanboys, he falls into this deceptive trap. For example, foot casts. It's evidence that someone made those casts from some kind of impression made by someone or something. Making a conclusion on something inconclusive and saying it's Bigfoot is wrong. Strange audio with peculiar harmonics doesn't mean it's Bigfoot, nor is it evidence that Bigfoot is calling out to you. Hair samples and how they are retrieved and submitted are always human, bear, canine, or deer. My source is Dr. Todd Disatel. Tracks, tracks are facts. <laughs> Video and photographic footage are not proof until we have a DNA sample of that specimen documented in video, making a footprint, recorded audio, leaving scat or getting its hair caught on a branch. Until then, it's all stories shared by middle-aged men who can get laid trying to make a buck off your beliefs. And then you got the footprint cast with the dermal ridges. <laughs> Bubbles, that's a hypothesis, because you don't have an actual foot to compare those casts to. Come on, man, act like you went to junior college or something. Oh, that's right, he was a crab fisherman. So you got, and then also just the foot articulation, the, the motion of the double ball, the mid-tarsal break. Mm. Once again, hypothesis. You speak of these things as if they're actual facts. They're elements to the speculation, not confirmation. Patterson Gimlin film. What do you think about that? Real or fake? Hoax, 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 hoax. Now check out what this David Twat said about the Patterson Gimlin suit on Coast to Coast AM. You start to find that there's a consistency in the description of the creature that really isn't consistent with the creature at Bluff Creek. And I should premise this, that we do believe that the creature in the Bluff Creek video is a real creature, but it doesn't match up with the sketches, the forensic sketches that we've done in that area, which is a little unusual to us, and we can't quite explain it. 
Bingo! When you take away the Patterson-Gimlin hoax, then you can finally do real Bigfoot research. You can't quite explain how eyewitness descriptions don't match up to the Patterson costume, right? Are you stupid? Call a spade a spade, David. Quit playing Bigfoot politics and come out for once and be truthful with what you think is going on. Grow some balls. Pretend the PG film is Jerry Stevens of San Jose. Yeah, that's another teaser for what's to come. Patterson Gimlin film. What do you think about that? Real or fake? 100%. 100% real. Of course you're gonna say that, Bobo. Because it's politics. Real Bigfoot research cannot begin until that film is revealed and shown to be the hoax that it is. Until then, keep making your money off that hoax. It's good for business. It also makes you a soft hoaxer, Bobo. Yeah. Those are the facts. So it's almost like in North America we're dealing with something that's different. Yeah. Is that your perception? I think so. Well, I, the Russians kind of report the same thing. They, yeah. They might have actual Neanderthals. They probably still have Neanderthals over there. Bless his heart. Whoever's giving Bobo that 40% THC needs to pull it back. When somebody does come up to you and, and challenges you and says, well, Bobo, you know, where's the body? Good question. I mean, it, it, it that, I can't explain that. I mean, I can and I can. Because there's no body to begin with. Bigfoot has to be alive first, right? And for some reason, we have to believe him and because he says it's real? Why? A lot of people say there's some kind of portal here that opens yeah. and closes. This interview has gone from bad to worse. Using an unknown to explain another unknown is just conjecture. What is conjecture, you ask my little Squatch monsters? Tell us, Richter. It's a noun and an opinion or conclusion formed on the basis of incomplete information. Conjecture is a statement that is believed to be true, but not yet proved. For example, Bigfoot is real. Conjecture. Richter knows the fine art of cunnilingus because he wants to drag. Conjecture. Oh. You know, one respected researcher I know, I'll tell you off camera, because he doesn't go public with it, but he was at the Southern Oregon Caves, and that was like, obviously, Matt Johnson area, kind of nutty guy, whatever, but... Who Lenny Small is talking about is that British womanizing Bigfoot hoaxer, Adam Davies. Yes, Adam, you're a hoaxer, Woo! just like the rest of them. Remember this bullshit sleeping bag video Adam tried to push on all of us with his one-time American wife, Lori Simmons. Dude, all of this is just junk. And you guys wonder why I want out of this mess. He was there and he saw these black entities come out of the portal. He saw the portal like the whole shimmering, like purpley, wavy, like predator looking like the predator and the Schwarzenegger movie kind of pixelated things coming out. They'd come out and they were saw these little black creature things. They weren't Bigfoots. Bobo, just stop. You don't know how bad you're looking right now, man. So what about some of the other Bigfoot shows that are out there right now? What do you think of them? <laughs> you're very polite. <laughs> oh, that was probably the best question DP could have asked him. Oh, David, I know I'm probably on your shit list for holding your ass to the fire, but that was pretty fucking awesome. Thank you for that. You see, he was referring to Expedition Shitfoot. Well, hey, we're, we're about out of time. Thank God. This was a train wreck. And as Bobo's publicist, this needs to be taken off the internet. But it was better than Mr. Furley's show, Bigfoot, Bigfoot Today, Bigfoot in Spokane. Mm -hmm. So what other Bigfoot personality has David Polites interviewed that he can claim to not hang out with? I'm here with Joe Hauser, the owner of the Montana Vortex. Well, my name is Joe Hauser. My background is in biology and most recently about 16 years of quantum physics. That's Joe Hauser. He's a nice man. And in the gay community, he's what you would call a daddy. I don't make love. I fuck. My. Hard. He's a bit woo-woo. 
He thinks Bigfoot has been at his Montana vortex inside the house of mystery, obviously, to get directions to the nearest portal. Oh, it all makes sense now. So I, I've been here several times. I thought David said he didn't associate with people in the Bigfoot world. And I usually don't associate with many people from that world. I'm so confused. David's word is as good as his police record. <gasps> and that's a fact. So in, in my research, I've always claimed that the peop where people disappear, there, there's always an association of, with water. Are we close to big body of water here? This is why Captain Obvious was demoted from a street cop to a pencil pusher collecting autographs while on the clock. He's as useless as a screen door on a submarine. I definitely can say it's a very, very odd place. And since you've been here, have you seen things happen that aren't consistent day to day? Yes, it's, uh, it, it's probably on a day in day out basis, it's probably one of the most paranormal places in North America. There's just a lot, lots of strange things happen here, uh, from Thunderbirds flying over, from Bigfoot showing up, to orbs, UFOs, just all kinds of different things that happen here. And yet, with all of that, all of those extraordinary claims from Daddy, we still have no proof Bigfoot is real. And all of this is, what's the word? Tell us, Richter conjecture. I could claim Bigfoot corks me when I go camping. And sadly, some of you will think that's true and would want to watch that. Oh yes, Daddy! I went inside to look and I, I saw a giant orb right in the center of a great big blue ring that kind of looked like a portal. I then, I knew there was an uh, SD card in the camera because I had taken it out earlier, so I got my cell phone and I recorded it. And then uh, a couple minutes later, we actually uh, had what appeared to be a Bigfoot that came into the frame. I saw a Bigfoot once. I uh, had wide shoulders, uh, kind of conical shaped head, and it just walked around a little bit in the house of mystery, looked back, took a look at us made a sound I would not want to hear twice in my life. Joe. Oh. Joe, you know, though I completely disagree and refute these amazing stories of Joe Hauser's, I wish we had more men like him in Bigfoot who believed in magic and the fantastical. Oh, wait. That, that doesn't make sense. And then it just kind of morphed up into this light being and floated away. Because maybe then we wouldn't have MAGA people like David Polites cheering on the insurrection and hurting impressionable minds. But then there's this guy. I think you're smoking hot and sexy and I want to put a guinea pig up your ass. It's all starting to make sense. Is there any kind of UFO connection to this? Stop, David. Don't ask Captain Kirk that question. How much do you want to bet Joe Hauser says he sees UFOs too? We typically, not every night, but a lot of nights that we watch, we'll see anywhere from 1 to 10, 15 UFOs flying out of the mountain. We've also seen them hovering over the vortex grounds here, so there's definitely a UFO connection here too. Hey David, ask Joe Hauser about Elvis. On second thought, Scrap that. Let's see who DP's third and final Bigfoot guest is. And this is a special edition because I'm in with one of the best guys you will ever meet, Ron Moorhead. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Ron and I spent a week together up at his Sierra camp. You know, after that clip, you probably thought I was going to make a Brokeback Mountain reference with DP and Ron Moorhead, didn't you? You guys are dirty. Speak up as loud as you can. <clears throat> Sorry. You're so demanding, DP. How about you say, please, next time? Sheesh. I guess you are a dom top after all. I've gone just about every year. Okay. And what, what was the main purpose of going to the camp? Well, originally it was for hunting. It was a hunting camp. But uh, these things, these 
something with a big foot card coming around the camp, so I'm making these noises. So we started going back taking tape reports because we obviously there weren't, a, it wasn't a bear, so we, it was a big foot. It was a big foot. It was a big foot. Okay, let me tell you guys what I think the Sierra sounds could be. I think the Sierra sounds could be real. I have told Ron this directly. I do think those sounds are very compelling. However, that doesn't mean they're made by Bigfoot. I don't think Al Berry and Ron Moorhead went out to hoax. They're not Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin. The late Al Berry had character, and Ron Moorhead has integrity. But Ron does have books to sell, and Ron does speak at Bigfoot conferences, and Ron does appear on Bigfoot TV shows labeled as a Bigfoot expert, which there's no such thing. And since Bigfoot is make-believe, I'm about to shock you guys. You can be whatever you want in Bigfoot. You call yourselves researchers. Well, what is stopping yourselves from becoming experts and using the term experts like Ron Moorhead? Go for it. I am C. Wayne Wilson, and I am the biggest Bigfoot researcher in the world. Nobody has crap on me. It had a big foot anyway. It had a big foot. Yeah, let's put it that way. Now, one of the things I asked you in the movie is, did you know 100% what was doing this? No. And you said no. We still don't know. Still don't know. No, it had a big foot, had a big voice, and there was several different ones because different sized tracks. It was a big foot. As confusing as it was listening to all that, Ron just said they had no visual verification if it was Bigfoot when they were recording those sounds. See, that goes back to what I said earlier. So therefore, they could have been pranked by Ray Wallace and his nephew just like Jerry Crew was. Perception becomes reality. Our senses can deceive us, but if I had to vote which is real or not real, the Sierra Sounds win over the Patterson hoax any day. But then since Bigfoot isn't real, it's all bullshit and a waste of time. Ooh, I like this part. Keep hitting him, Ron. Harder, faster. Do it for the people of color who live in San Jose. Who is Jerry Stevens, you ask? You're gonna find out. That was another tease. Next big newsworthy event. Can you imagine if double penetration, the great David Polites, the San Jose failure of a police officer, did his own political talk show? <gasps> Let's take a look. I'm kind of scared. From Sasquatch to Skinwalkers, portals to potholes, it's America's favorite conspiracy theorist, currently broadcasting from a bunker in Montana, David Politis. He's done his research. Tell me something about Parliament that's not true, because I've already done the research. I can guarantee to you there's not going to be any censorship. I have never, ever stated that I understand what's happening here or that I think a certain subject is doing this. I've never said it. But there's a lot of people out there who have read the books who believe something like this may be occurring. And so I get invited to these conferences. And I go where I'm invited because I need to get the word out. Just the facts, 411. He implies Bigfoot is the reason for so many missing people, and yet he stands there and says he never makes any claims. Does he really think his audience is that stupid? Just the facts, 411. Well, you know, David's right. They are stupid. And so... Hey, MAGA! Democrats aren't the enemy. It's the rich billionaires that are manipulating weak-minded people like you. No. Not 1%. David, you're patronizing your audience. Yeah, uh, I don't believe it. I'm sorry. Hey, David, come closer. I have something I want to tell you. Has anyone told you that your eyes are too close together? Now get ready for some serious hypocrisy, guys. Ready, set, go. Two things you will not hear out of me. Political comments, 
President Biden's oil and gas history in the U.S. President Biden suspended all new oil and gas drilling on U.S. lands and waters. President Biden suspends all oil drilling leases in the Elastic Arctic region. President Biden tells OPEC, the oil producing exporting countries, to increase their production if they can. Joe Biden this, Joe Biden that. At least that stuttering politician, that lifelong stuttering politician, isn't leading an insurrection on our capital and attempting to overthrow our democracy. Like you were openly excited for, David. But carry on. I will be here to present the facts. Just the facts. The way he says that, it's pretty creepy and angry. The facts. Present the facts. Just the facts. Is he autistic? Just the facts. This needs to be a drinking game. Just facts. I think it's Tourette's. Facts. He reminds me of one of those broken animatronic things at Disneyland. That's a fact. Enough! I'm just gonna talk about facts. The more he says it, the more his uneducated, brainwashed QAnon base will believe him. And that's a fact. Our brains are wired to accept repetitive vernacular as truth. The more times you say it, it gets reinforced like levels of cement. That's why Donald Trump was so effective at brainwashing so many good, hardworking Americans. A lot of people in Bigfoot were radicalized by him. We won with poorly educated. I love the poorly educated. Do you know why Donald Trump loves the poorly educated, especially poorly educated white men? because you're gullible, because you're an easy mark, because you only get your information from Fox News or Donald Trump, and that allows Trump to control what you see and what you think. White American men have been targeted and radicalized by Trump, just like ISIS radicalizes their soldiers. One D-list mega Bigfooter even terrorized me when I was a guest inside his home. Come on, friends, you gotta be smarter than this. David smiles, and he gives his viewers a wink while patronizing his uneducated Bigfoot audience. He strips away their freedom of thought and realigns his MAGA base ideals with his. He's a master of subliminal messages. He confuses his viewers with missing people cases that he doesn't investigate accurately while profiteering over people suffering. He hides his extremist political rhetoric in his missing case videos and gives misleading information about COVID. <coughs> I'm a hundred times better on my health. <coughs> <laughs> As documented by the San Jose Mercury News, double penetration used to beat up black people when he was a police officer. Mm. Now he's worried about death threats at a silly Bigfoot conference. My, how the mighty have fallen. I am the only openly Antifa member in Bigfoot. The only thing David Polites has to worry about me is whether or not I give him a reach around. Ooh, yeah. No one needs to cancel a conference. I get death threats all the time. I'm not scared. I'll fucking blow the motherfucker's brains out if I see him. <laughs> now, I've already told everyone close to me what I'm going to do with this is... When I get my third strike on YouTube, I'll probably film this episode. We're gonna go out to the shooting range with Angie and a bunch of buddies, I think. And this is gonna be our target and we're just gonna blow it to some of the rings. So this old man is butthurt over being restricted by YouTube for posting extremist content on their platform. That he's resorting to violence and desecration of a plaque that he received? This is no man. He is part of the problem, always playing the victim. And he was a cop. Here is something that David Polites never learned as a police officer and as a man. Keep this thought handy when you feel a fit of rage coming on. It isn't manly to be enraged. Rather, gentleness and civility are more human and therefore manlier. A real man doesn't give way to anger and discontent. 
And such a person has strength, courage, and endurance, unlike the angry and complaining. The nearer a man comes to a calm mind, the closer he is to strength. Marcus Aurelius, he was a Bigfoot researcher many years ago. They don't like the message, so they're going to take me down one way or the other. David Polides really thinks he's something special, doesn't he? He's no role model. He's a, what's the word? Hey, Steve Isdall, help me out here. And basically a pussy. Thank you. When I was a police officer in intelligence, I can tell you that there's a high level of expertise, professionalism that comes with many of those in that job. He brought none to the job and was an embarrassment to the police force. If only Brad Cava, Betty Barnacle, and Sandra Gonzalez, and Jerry Stevens could see him now. Who are they, they ask? The reporters who reported on his police misconduct and the victim at the other end of the baton. This old leopard hasn't changed his spots. This is who and what David Polites always was. A coward, a liar, a monster. He is the polar opposite of what love is. He's a fool. Call me a fool. I just said that. A lot of people are starting to see this cowardly sick son of a bitch for what he is and what he's all about. Like the people on this podcast. Oh, what are we talking about this week? That mother... Mmm. <laughs> which, oh. which that mother... There's a lot of that mother... around right now. David, please. Oh, my God. I, I so hate... David, please? Guy. David Polides. <laughs> a ladies. I Please. hate him so much. Oh my God! Listen, I, I kind of like him though because he's uh, that that our last episode with Polides uh, is our highest uh, download rate. Oh, my God. Yeah, and that was our first hate mail, wasn't it? Maybe. I think so. Only hate mail. That guy didn't like Kate. Bring it. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> I don't care. I hate that <laughs> huckster. He's a liar. Oh, yeah, he's a grifter. He is. He's he's such a liar, and he's so full of. <laughs> well, the FBI doesn't get involved in missing adult cases. Yes, they do. Are you high? Oh no, you're just lying because you know it makes your story sound better. It sells his books. This is a uh, oh. this is brought about because <laughs> solely because uh, one of his movies is finally uh, uh, free streaming on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I was like, oh, that's an episode. <laughs> <laughs> And this yeah, is, the, is this is number two movie for him, and so it'll be number two episode. Oh, he's got more, for he's us. Got more movies. You just have to pay out the nose to see him. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about free. I will, I will never pay to watch or read anything by this. Oh, I, I, at the last at the last I checked, you can only get his books through him, and they are at a premium. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. Well, actually, don't f <laughs> him. <laughs> don't f <laughs> him. Well, he probably I likes it dry anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like those people have David's number. I'm glad I'm not the only person that thinks he likes it dry. That's okay. I can self-lubricate. Because oh. I'm a bitch. The latter part of Missing 401 Hunters, they, they go into <laughs> Bigfoot territory. They never yeah, they say do. Bigfoot. Not outright. That's the thing about Pilates. Pilates. Whatever. That <laughs> He never comes out and says Bigfoot, no, or space aliens, or fairies. Yeah, he lets his he lets his followers do that. For yeah, he lets his followers let's do that. For everybody's him. imagination run wild, and I'm like, you know, my imagination's not running wild. Well, it's a, so uh, I'm just looking at this like it's, this is bullshit. The great thing about his missing whatever is if you, if the two we've watched. It's he never comes out and says it, and the thing is, because he never comes out and says it, you're going, why are you doing this? Yeah, what, what's the point? You're what's the to point do? of this show now? Right. What is your angle? You know, what are you trying to tell us? Because we don't understand you. And it's well known in his background. After he left police work, he was a Bigfoot researcher. You know, if, if my eyes roll any farther back in my head, I'm going to need new eyes. <laughs> God bless those people and that Kentucky Kernels of Truth podcast. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe in demeaning and degrading of people. I'm one of these people that sit on the sidelines and look at the horrid comments that come through towards other people in the world. I don't understand it. 
How quaint of him to sit back and claim he's altruistic and not be mean and demeaning when in fact it appears he was an absolute asshole cop. If you go by the local newspapers, he was a fucking monster. He repeatedly abused his power as a cop in San Jose and beat up oh black people. Yeah. Wait, what? What? Oh, hell no! You gotta hold me back! I don't understand why people out there need to puff out their chests by making their thoughts known on a public forum about what they think about somebody in a demeaning, lack of integrity type of way. It's called holding people accountable for what they say and do. David thinks he has morals. It justifies his anger and violence. But what if you're a victim of his? The Mercury News has everything documented and it did not go unnoticed. Is he going to claim that the reporters, Brad Kava, Betty Barnacle, and Sandra Gonzalez had some kind of evil, liberal vendetta against him by painting him as a bad racist cop? Were they the progenitors of Antifa in 1987? How is DP going to spin this? He won't even address it. He isn't transparent with his past and doesn't own up for the things he has done. That would mean taking accountability for his actions. And there's no accountability in Bigfoot. Yes, we are getting close to the shit I found out on him. Your patience is about to be paid off. I appreciate each and every one of you and you are important. Yeah. It appears he appreciates each and every one of you who's white, MAGA, and heterosexual, who only shares his new world perspective. I challenge David Polites to say that black lives matter too. Did they matter in the 1980s in San Jose? Hmm. And aren't all people innocent until proven guilty? Right? Isn't that why we have judges in the courts to decide someone's fate? What does Derek Chauvin, Mark Furman, and David Polites all have in common? Well, let's take a look at it from the David Polites literary perspective. I'll let you figure that out. I have every news article on this man. David Polites scares me. What's about that? Now let's listen to this clip of David Polites from Coast to Coast AM, July 31st, 2016. One of the things that we talked about before was uh, cooperation. And one of the things I like to think that I pride myself in is being able to get along with different people from different venues. David Polites says he prides himself for getting along with people from different venues. Oh, interesting. There's nothing worse than a bully, right? There's nothing worse than a sack of shit bully. David is an authoritarian absolutist. This is what it is because I say that's what it is. Just the facts. He has a very fascist, imperious way of thinking. My way or the highway. He isn't sensible. His motivation for everything is, you better fall in line or fall away. After everything you're going to find out about David Polites and his cringe-worthy past, you're going to see there's a consistency in the description of this man's character that really isn't consistent with the man he portrays himself out to be. I'm very blessed. I'm having a good week. He's blessed because he had a bowel movement this morning. But he's not going to have a good week after this segment. Mm -mm. Live from the CBS Bay Area Studios, this is KPIX 5 News. The guy was on the ground. San Jose police had him surrounded. Then this happened. Tonight, was it justified or excess force? Now that Bay Area news clip is not about David Polites, but it might as well be. Check out these newspaper articles. It's life imitating life. According to the San Jose newspaper, the Mercury News, David Polites abused his power as a police officer and retaliated against black people who were suspects. 
His alleged police brutality is documented over and over and over again in the news, along with four other police officers. It's all there for you to find on your own, my little Squatch Monsters. The first documented newspaper article was from January 9th, 1987, by reporter Brad Cava. Assault suspect says San Jose police beat him. This supposedly occurred to an alleged black drug dealer suspect named Jerry Stevens and two other black men on December 27th, 1986. When asked about his involvement with the original incident, David Polites deferred questions to his supervisors. In all fairness, that's what you're supposed to do. Right? The second article is dated the same day by Brad Kava and Betty Barnacle and is a continuation of the first one. Blacks say they are victimized. As the story goes, supposedly this suspect beat up a police officer on Christmas Day and five police officers retaliated two days later when they were beating him up and kicking him at his friend's apartment while he is on the floor. Then on February 9th, 1987, Brad Cava of the Mercury News printed, San Jose police beat suspect, witness say. And in the story, it is stated that it was the third time in the past few months that blacks were being beaten by Politis' SWAT team called MERGE, Mobile Emergency Response Group and Equipment. It's a SWAT team. The fourth article, featuring our Bigfoot hero, David Polites, was written again by Brad Cava on February 12, 1987. Brutality charges studied. San Jose police conduct internal probe. Looks like that's when double penetration David was transferred from the SWAT team and demoted to a patrolman. David, what did you do? And of course, as you would expect, on May 15, 1987, the police culture protected their own. No charges in alleged brutality. Police say internal probe continues. Interesting how David went from patrolman to a court liaison officer. What a fall from grace. Does he have anger management problems? I think we know the answer. I'm really nobody. I think David Polites was a racist, based on the news articles written about him, and I also allege he was a bad cop. But that's just my opinion, and we all know he doesn't support gay people. But I do know that since COVID has hit, and since kids are meant to be out and be socializing and be playing and doing sports and flirting at school with people of the opposite sex, since that's ended, things have changed. So he is saying kids are now suddenly turning gay because of COVID-19 restrictions? Or is he saying kids should only flirt with the opposite sex because gay is bad? I can't help but seriously wonder why Ben Polites took his life. Was he gay? And was having an extremist father like David Politis the reason it drove Ben to joining the Hare Krishna cult? Trying to find love and acceptance? David claims it was a mental illness that made his son take his life. Something tells me. David considers lesbians, gays, bisexuals, transgendered, and queer and non-binary people to be suffering from some kind of mental illness. When in actuality, it's cruel and unaccepting people like David Polites that make us suffer, not mental illness. Maybe David is the one suffering from mental illness. If you look back into his police career, he targeted gay men in the Bay Area of San Francisco by arresting gay men who approached him for sex. Apparently, Miss Thang had the highest record for gay arrests during a time when gays like me were dying from the AIDS epidemic. We were an easy target. The Gay and Lesbian Center was only two years old and we didn't have a foot to stand on politically. We were disregarded. We were second class citizens. So a cowardly police officer who was documented for abusing his police powers started his career by hanging out in the gay bookstores in hopes of entrapment. Way to go.
go, little rock star. The gay and lesbian newspaper from San Francisco, The Bar, Bay Area Reporter, said Politis was king of the bookstore detail. The gays were happy he was supposedly leaving the San Jose police force to join the FBI. Alas, for whatever reason, the FBI didn't bring him on. Maybe they saw a liability coming from a mile away. Who knows? Hey, David. No, it's okay. Just me and you. You want a blowjob? Oh, you're going to arrest me now? Why do I keep holding out for hope on you? Because I'm an eternal optimist who always thinks people are good deep down. Maybe you aren't. Maybe you are a homophobic racist. How many lives did you ruin by arresting them and therefore outing them to their families for their homosexuality? Out of those 100 gay men you arrested, David, how many are still alive today due to the AIDS epidemic wiping us out so effectively? Better than you could ever hope for. What good did you do to the overall greater community? Were you giving out condoms to gay men? No. Did you try to educate gay men on the importance of safe sex? No. Did you serve and protect the gay community? No. You targeted gay men for going to the one place they felt safe to be themselves. Look at how handsome he was back then. I would have been the first to bend over for that. I bet I could make his nightstick disappear in my back portal. Mm. My. Shit, I would have rocked that world, honey. <laughs> At the jack shack, in the police car, and in the back alley. But it looks like Steve Isdall beat me to it. Get that nightstick, Steve. Get it. Seriously, what good did that do? He targeted the gays because it was easy. I think we have two options here. Either he's a latent homosexual and was angry they were fulfilling their sexual desires because for whatever reason he couldn't, or he got off on hurting them. Either way, he was getting off. And he sits back and says he hates bullies. What the fuck do you think that was all about? Uh, all of you are important. Each of you are important. Really? Even his victims of police brutality? Even gay people? What about gay, black, and trans people? Do they matter, David? Listen to this part. It's probably the closest we will ever get to him acknowledging his horrific past. And I can think of times in my past where, when I was young, maybe in sports. Or uh, you mean sports being a metaphor for the police force? Sports or something, and we got to tussle during a game or something where I said something to an opponent. Or retaliated and abused his power as a police officer? Probably wouldn't have been the nicest thing. Or during a hockey game, in a brutal hockey game, I got pretty mad. But, it's from decades ago, so. So that kind of violent behavior was okay because it happened decades ago. Got it. I love how David Pilates was on his best behavior for nine years, not ever being mentioned in the newspaper until my favorite shaming article that came out dated December 21st, 1996. It was written by Sandra Gonzalez. San Jose officer accused of false solicitation of autographs. A force veteran allegedly used city stationery to ask for memorabilia. How embarrassing. That's you, David. Was an autographed CD by Lionel Richie that important to risk your career and retirement over? Hello, is it me you're looking for? Check out this little nugget of gold. David even solicited Ivana Trump and allegedly lied about claiming he was working on a city project. In the letter to Trump, dipshit said, you are a great role model for young women. I've been giving the task by my city to develop a display for our lobby of successful business women. No wonder David gets mad at Bigfoot conferences and lectures the crowd to not research the Bigfoot researcher. 
His credibility will be challenged. And frankly, he has none. His credibility is zero. But you're supposed to serve and protect as a police officer, right? Not judge and punish. I have dated many cops. I know their culture. In fact, one boyfriend of mine even accidentally killed a man the same way Derek Chauvin did. But he got away with it by his sheriff's department sweeping it under the rug. Instead of a knee to the throat, he sat on him and wouldn't let him up after the suspect was begging to breathe. It's very common. Well, the day's, the day's here, friends. And uh, I already knew that they were looking at me hard. Sort of like the black ministers in San Jose, right, David? My God, I would die if I had ministers of any race or creed, culture, whatever, come after me. I would be mortified. And that brings in January 6th. What do I think of that? Oh, God. I'm afraid to see what he says about the insurrection. Look at him. He says it with a gleam in his eye. Because we need to be out there on the streets letting the world know how outraged we are. I think you already did that a year ago. How'd that go for you? Instead of killing Capitol Police officers and ransacking our nation's capital, maybe you should just burn down liquor stores instead. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what black people do. Oh, forgive me. Oh, I forgot. After all, I am Antifa, and that is in the Antifa membership guidelines. Australia has rioted in their streets, and I mean polite rioting, walking, holding the flag. This idiot doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Is he stupid? In fact, tomorrow, I don't even like to say it because I'll be arrested. Well, let's not say it. We need... We need to go, I'll say it, we need to go in to the Capitol. Let's go! Because we need to be out there on the streets letting the world know how outraged we are. You know, the FBI did an investigation and said that there was no organized effort to take over the Capitol that day. Doesn't he know who Christopher Ray is at the FBI and who put him in there? Well, if the FBI did that, then what is this Jan January 6th commission doing? Both sides need to be represented. That's why we have Republicans Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger on the committee. The only ones with balls of steel to put country over party. God, David Polites is a wannabe Alex Jones. And why did the commission kick off two Republican members? They never stated why. They just kicked them off. Because they're being investigated. Is David stupid or is he confused? Did a portal suddenly suck out his brain and replace it with rocks? I want to think that David knows the difference between right and wrong. As a police officer, whether good or bad, he should know you don't make suspects part of the investigation team. Let's put it this way. Would David Polites want Jerry Stevens to be a part of the internal probe looking into his police brutality charges? It would be corrupt, right? David is either intentional with his rhetoric or really is that stupid. That's for you guys to decide. Nobody has ever claimed that Ashley Babbitt had a weapon in her hand. They never accused her of committing a violent act against a person. Let's be clear about this. Ashley Babbitt was part of a violent insurrection against our Capitol, a crime inside a federal building. It wasn't trespassing or polite rioting, as David would like to call it. She was ordered by the police to stand down. She should have complied. How dare he whitewash what his J6 buddies did? They looted. They vandalized. They destroyed. They seized the capital like any foreign adversary would love to do. And yet, he smiles about it with a gleam in his eye. Now let's see if this Antifa homosexual liberal could understand this David Polites logic correctly. Kyle Rittenhouse is a hero for shooting rioters. Got it. And Ashley Babbitt shouldn't have been shot for rioting. 
breaking and entering the speaker's lobby? Do I have that correct? This mental gymnastics people like David do is to justify their own abhorrent behavior. It's ridiculously hypocritical. Ashley Babbitt tried to overthrow our government and it cost her her life. What more is there to say about it? Let's use the George Floyd logic that people like to use to spin it. Had she not been committing a crime or at the scene of a crime, she wouldn't have been shot by the police. As she now serves a martyr for MAGA than she would have ever done as a freedom fighter. Here I am defending the police from a disgraced police officer. Shame on you, David Polites. I didn't see Ashley Babbitt assaulting anybody. Ashley Babbitt died a traitor to this country. And worse than that, she was an Air Force vet. I'm an Air Force vet. So it really took me, how can, how can any veteran become an insurrectionist and a traitor to their country? She's going to be, I'm sure, her name's going to be lifted a, a, a lot in the next few days. And I just have to say, may she never rest in peace. Fact, Ashley Babbitt was no angel. The police officer who shot her did so to protect multiple innocent civilians. Those are the facts. That's a fact. Ashley Babbitt was a veteran who swore an oath to defend the Constitution from enemies of foreign and domestic. Ashley Babbitt became what she swore an oath to defend. Ashley Babbitt was a domestic terrorist. End of story. His MAGA buddies brutalized our Capitol Police officers. His brothers in blue. They even killed one of them as a result of their polite rioting. Outside, Officer Brian Sicknick was sprayed with bear repellent and died the next day from a stroke, according to a medical examiner. Breaking and entering. How dare he say that? Pilates is no better than Russell Accord, a man who has no honor like him who said, it's simply a building, no matter how you look at it. <laughs> it's our country's capital, you stupid motherfucker. What were those people doing in that hallway? You know, I've thought about this a hundred times. And as a police officer, if somebody enters a building with no intent of theft and no intent of committing a felony, just enters a building, trespassing. Jesus Christ. What is wrong with you people? You swore an oath. Both of you. It's only as good as long as you agree with it at a certain time. I didn't see her attacking anyone. I didn't see or hear anyone claim she had a weapon in her hand. I didn't hear that she was attacking anyone with intent to injure. But you have Michael Bird pointing his weapon at her, discharging the weapon and killing her. Capitol Officer Lieutenant Michael Byrd, who was protecting the Senate, was a black man, a person of color. Now I ask you this, do you think David has absolute righteous disgust over him for being black? And then the Department of Justice cleared him of all wrongdoing. Correct because he was protecting our seat of government, protecting our democracy, because she was a domestic terrorist, you stupid son of a bitch. Villagers, if he was able to kill her and justify the killing of her, then the same logic, logic could be applied to everyone in that hallway. He could have shot and killed all of those people for doing what? I can't watch any more of his seditionist propaganda. He implies blacks are bad, gays are invisible, and J6 seditionists were just misdemeanor trespassers. And what's sad is, David is too stupid to realize no television production will want to touch him with a 10-foot pole after these kind of irreverent and dangerous rhetoric. He is stupid on such a fundamental level. Ha! Huh, that he doesn't realize that he made himself out to be the biggest jackass in television history by appearing on a show called Vanished, where he said this. That there is that possibility 
that your relative walked into this portal. <laughs> Man. He's not smart. We need more good people. We don't need these problem makers. But these good people that really contribute to society. David Politis was a shit stain on the San Jose Police Department and is now a shit stain on our own country. And he says these things all for YouTube monetization because that's what matters. He makes Rick Dyer look like a swell guy. His authoritarian MAGA QAnon propaganda even overrides supporting his brothers in blue. For example, the state of Washington has lost hundreds of police officers to COVID-19 due to death. Because in 2021, out of the 515 officers that died, 353 of them died from COVID. In fact, it's the number one killer of law enforcement for the last two years running. I mean, in 2020, it was 256 officers who died from COVID. And that's not like CNN. That comes from Officer Down, which is a site dedicated to honoring the memory of fallen officers. Oh, and for any of those, they uh, exaggerate the COVID numbers. The people died from other things and they call it COVID people. Then explain why in 2019, there was only 155 officer deaths, period. More officers died of COVID alone in 2020 than died in the entirety of 2019. And nearly a hundred more than that died in 2021. Yet this sham of an ex-cop is anti-vaccine, COVID denying. Yet he wants the police to protect him if he goes to a Bigfoot conference? Either you back the blue or you don't. And this includes Lieutenant Michael Byrd from the Capitol Police. David Politis is a fraud. Law enforcement officers are trained exceptionally well, have years of experience dealing in crisis management. Where is his outrage for his brothers in blue not getting the right information they needed to stay alive? Oh wait, he's part of the problem. Got it. Giving COVID disinformation, jeopardizing his audience and their safety like he did to Samantha Ritchie, Wayne Barnes and Mike Mraz. Got it. Yeah, I get it now. He's part of this evil. He is an extension of this evil. People are dying, and he is rallying his audience for the wrong cause. Just for YouTube clickbait monetization. I don't need to be in this Bigfoot world. There's a lot of uh, people that are very unstable. He is the pot calling the kettle black. This old man thrives on manipulation of information. The news facts and the regular facts because a lot of you are not getting the truth. The truth is, David Politis is a hypocrite and another gaslighter, like that aborted Canadian fetus, Steve Isdall. You suck. No wonder they're in a circle jerk together. To him, it's either black or white, all or nothing with a good versus evil mindset. He's in an authoritarian cult which of course, his opinions being what is good and what only matters. He preys on his viewers' phobias that they already have installed in their heads, thinking that if they disobey, terrible things are going to happen to them. He suffers from the inability to see the possibility that Trump could be bad or wrong, because blacks are bad and gays are wrong. You can't get away with saying whatever you want without consequences. Now listen to this part. This is all about education and saving lives. And then he says this. Because over the course of the next year, I'm going to be delivering more of these facts. Why? Because I want you to be outraged as much as I am. Does David realize he can be held accountable for what someone does after listening to his extremist broadcasting? He wants you to get so outraged that you will go out and do something terrible. He is manipulating his viewers all for clicks. Guys, he's feeding on your emotions. He's a privileged middle class white man. Why is he so outraged? Why is he playing the victim? And why is he wanting to be your only source of information? What does he have to gain for it? What about instilling high morals? 
being a good person. When in fact, at the end of the day, he isn't a good person. He wants you to be a good person according to his supremacist authoritarian definition. This is morally wrong. Who died and made him judge and jury of what is right? And then he goes on national TV and says this. Look, if we can open our minds and say that there's the possibility of portals, that could explain what happened to Carl. Wow. <laughs> Let's be absolutely clear on this. Portals, gateways, wormholes, whatever. It's science fiction. It's a hypothesis, not fact. Using an unknown to describe another unknown, especially heartbreaking. It's irresponsible. And the fact that he made a Star Trek conclusion for missing people with their unexplained disappearances right in front of grieving family members is beyond shocking. It's disgusting. It's revolting. It's disrespectful. How dare he do that? How dare he abuse his powers as a police officer? How dare he exploit people suffering for profit? And how dare he make excuses of what his MAGA buddies did to our capital? How dare David Polites say to these good people on national TV, to their faces, that their loved ones disappeared because of magic time portals? If David was to suggest that my brother's disappearance would be due to a portal, we would be having a much different discussion right now. How dare David give COVID disinformation to over 340,000 people on YouTube? How dare him take advantage of people during these challenging and uncertain times just for YouTube monetization? I'm glad I brought that up. That is not being a good person, David Polites. In my opinion, is deeply a troubled man. He has anger issues and suffers from some kind of disconnect. He states he is seeing a therapist, but I think he should just get his money back. And his statements make him a fraud. He is polluting the Bigfoot world and is the very thing I despise about this Bigfoot community. This Bigfoot circus. He's an opportunist, cashing in on your feelings, fears, and prejudices. This is what he's making off his videos on YouTube according to socialblade.com. That's how much he values your feelings and needs your continued interest in his video propaganda. $56,000. That's the cost of your life. That's the cost of my friend Wayne Barnes' life, who looked up to David Polites and died from COVID-19. Uh, these are my friends Lori and Wayne, and I just told them your membrane story. That is perhaps the most disgusting thing I've ever, ever heard in my life. I'm intrigued. Oh. Just imagine when you pull your hand up. <laughs> Where is David's responsibility with that? He doesn't care. Because he's a conflict entrepreneur. In his mind, does David think he's a hero? And would a hero use their late son as a tool for YouTube clickbait? As of this recording, David Politis has made $124 off that recent video of his late son because that's what matters. He profits over pain and suffering. That's a fact. On the next, off the Richter. All right, my Squatch Monsters, the next episode is the Hall of Shame Awards. Who's going to be the biggest Bigfoot loser in the world of Bigfoot?
My name is Richter Rolo, and this is why I'm the best Bigfoot hunter in the world. Maybe Bigfoot's gay. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I'm your legacy. I exist because of you. I'm drugged up like crazy. I'm drugged up right now. I'm hiding everything, and I'm a hoaxer, and I got caught, and I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I have what I think is equivalent to a bachelor's degree in tracking and sign. Bigfoot is like cancer, in my opinion. Yeah. Positivity, the going forward, unity. I mean, I know we can't all be pals. We can't. It's impossible. Um, I hate to make these videos because I don't like to ask for money. Um, I really appreciate any help you guys can give me, even if it's a one-time thing. I can just tell you everybody straight up, my brain, as soon as I hear science, my brain goes instantly to F science. Those are the facts. The next week should be interesting to everybody. Pay special attention to what happens in Washington. Who knows? And that brings in January 6th. They announce their presence just about everywhere. If we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Hey Scott, you're the biggest loser. That means greetings to all. Uh -huh. What David Paulides on Katras. So what I'm trying to do with the forest flirt and, and my research and my podcast. What the hell is that hot cross-eyed mess? Mr. Furley, couldn't you come back later? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you had company. <laughs> <laughs> Mike! Oh, Mike! Mike! Patterson. He was a hoaxer! But I've had physical contact many times too.